Hi, I'm Gabe Lopez, and I'm with Caden Bell. And we're at the Sienega um, wrestling meet against Walden Grove. Um, right now we have Walden Grove warming up, and Sienega should be coming in pretty soon. Um, so today's the senior night for um, Sienega. We have about about nine, ten seniors coming out today, and um, really excited to see their seniors wrestle. Uh, our wrestlers are currently in the wrestling room practicing, preparing just as hard as these guys for a great match tonight. Can't tonight. wait to see Rich McCormick and Josh Savage out there. And other people like Jack Ferguson, he's going to have a great match for his first senior night. Hunter Lashley, too, wrestling 157. Today we um um looks like Ro Walden Grove doesn't have that big of a team, um so I think Sienega should be doing pretty good against them today. I mean, they might not have a big team, but they all look expect like really good, and they all weighed in pretty well. That is true, that is true. It really just depends on the wrestler because for this it's really just a single match at a time, so it just depends on what wrestler is better. But Sienga has been practicing just as hard, if not harder, preparing true. for this it's night. True. One of our seniors isn't wrestling tonight though, right? No, I think some of our seniors are gonna have some forfeits. Mm. Probably due to the smaller teams. Yeah. So tonight we're going to be having Daniel, Daniel Hernandez against Jack Warren. And then Zachary Bates versus Dakota Nettles at 106. Ooh, that's not right. And then we have Jack Ferguson against Jaron Martin. Uh, Pedro Mendoza against Jack Ferguson again. At 126. And then Channing Porter at 126 against Gunnar Robbins at 126. We have 132. Isaiah Borbin against David Chase. And then Jacek Lewis. Against Curtis Chase at 138. And then Christian Gallardo. Gallardo? Gallardo. Gallardo. Against Christian Gallardo against Irving Rodriguez. And then Esteban Carrillo. Esteban Carrillo against Hunter Lashley at 157. Jaden Bitten. Jaden Biden against Patrick Fleming at 175. Salvador Nieves. Salvador Nieves against Dominic Parks at 285. And our two forfeits for Sienega is Richie McCormick and Josh Savage. Uh, it looks like Jack Warren on 106. He's going to have two matches against Daniel Hernandez and Dakota Nettles at 106. I and think Zachary Bates is going to be going against Dakota Nettles at 113. Yeah, different weight classes. Oh, my trip. Oh, I was reading the wrong thing. <laughs> All right, well, I'm excited for these matches. Yep. Really think David Chase and Curtis Chase have this in the bag. Especially for the last senior nights at Sienega High. Yep. And we should be starting soon as they're practicing their up downs. We're going to be. There seems like there's going to be more people out in the audience in a little bit. Yeah, parents are starting to fill in the stands. Getting excited to see their kids. It's going to be a real great wrestling match tonight. So what? who do you think is going to be bagging the win tonight? <sighs> Got to go for scanning it, man. True, Rest true. School. Um, so, we should be getting Sienega in here a little bit, but as we, um, there's a lot of concessions over here. 
Um, I think the concession stand opened up already. I believe the snack bar's open. They usually set it up. Yep, I think so. Before. But yeah, really, tonight's just important to support our seniors. I think the coach is going to give a couple speeches about the seniors. Can't wait to hear it. Definitely support for them. It's been a journey with them. It indeed has. It'd be sad in the season without them. Definitely bring some light it to the would. room. It would. There's some real team captains, and they really take a lot of leadership. Also, also show some uh, great experience in the room, helping new wrestlers out, showing them new moves and stuff. It's always Daniel good coming out now. Oh, Daniel Hernandez, Dakota. You have Jack Ferguson, David Chase, Thomas Kajuljud, Curtis. David. Is Thomas wrestling tonight? I think Thomas is wrestling tonight. Ooh. All we set up. We have to wait for uh, Walden Grove to get off the mat, and we should be starting up right now. Um, we also have to thank our coach, Coach Hickey, for um, really guiding these seniors throughout their journey and. Really just being a great overall coach. Coach Higgy, best coach I've actually ever had in all sports. He's amazing. It's awesome. It's awesome. Always. And kind. we have our assistant coaches, Coach Fleming and um, Coach Curtis, as we call coach him. Coach Curtis, yeah. And Coach Dylan. Some great coaches. Always doing great work. Definitely make it easier for us to learn. Yep, we have a lot of patience, too. Yeah, we did have some setbacks in the room. Especially with Jordan. Can't believe that guy. <laughs> Always messing around. <laughs> and then with COVID right now, um, we have some wrestlers out of the room, obviously. Oh, like Zachary Anderson. He's unfortunately out. Yeah, I don't think Zachary Anderson is actually here today. But I think replacing Zachary Anderson is um, Gunner, I think, for Sienega Wrestling. Either Gunner or Jack Ferguson, yeah. Yeah. I know Zachary's in 126 now, huh? Yeah. Pretty sure Coach talked about Gunner was going to be replacing him for today. But Gunner's been, unfortunately been out for a while. It's COVID, too, so he's not been at practice That is very true. Often. That is true. COVID has really been So affecting. that's going to be an interesting match, but I believe he can pull through still. He's a very yeah. skilled wrestler. All that really matters is just who has more of a will to win and who's more conditioned. I believe in our boys. They all get pushed pretty hard, especially for varsity. Last night was yep. pretty intense practice for them. All these kids are pushing real hard to practice. And, yeah, I think. And it's great to see out here Jack Ferguson, his first year wrestling. Oh, yeah, he's an amazing wrestler. Really, he's aggressive and really puts it all out there. He's kind of like a bull almost. Almost. That's what I call him. Releases all of his energy at the start. Can't wait to see that burst. Yeah, maybe you'll get a fast pin. We'll see. Maybe, maybe. And it's always the best when you could pin him in the first period and really just get all the other periods over with. Really? And then you're not tired after. It's great. Yeah, that's what I like to do. I like to just pin him in the first period to get the, the rest of the other periods over so with so you don't really have to go out all through the other periods because it's really tiring, you know? I've also noticed this is Thomas's first year wrestling as well, and we also see him down there in the seats. I think so, I think so. Just preparing. Daniel, he's been wrestling for a few years, but this is his first official year due to COVID last year. It's true, it's true. And then Curtis Chase, can't wait to see him out there. Curtis, the, both the Chase brothers are amazing wrestlers, yep. Ooh, that's right. Power brothers out there tonight. True, true. Confident they'll both win. Yep. Looks like the coach talking with the athletic director should be getting started pretty soon. Looks like they're all setting up. Wells Grove has gone off the mat, so we're preparing now. Yeah. Who's wrestling first? Are we going up weight classes? Um, I think it's going from smallest weight class to the biggest weight class. Uh, so most likely see Daniel yeah. Hernandez versus Jack Warren out there tonight. Jack Warren, yeah, I think that's 106, right? Yeah, 106 Jack Warren. It's going to be an exciting match. Daniel Hernandez is really fast out there on the match. Um, 
He has a, he has a unique wrestling style. Really makes it his own. Uh, really does each and every oh, move to his very own. Very flexible, yeah. Really flexible, really flexible. He has he's small, but has a lot of muscle right. tucked away. He wrestles like a snake almost. Almost, almost. He kind more like a I say more like an ant. So an ants are actually really strong. That's true. But it's just the way he wraps around you, tightens up. It's like a boa, you know. Yeah. But he's always interesting to wrestle. Always surprises you with something new. Yeah, I feel like after after you've been wrestling for a while, you kind of just develop your own type of style, you know. Like some some people like to be lower in their stance, some people like to be higher. It just really depends on who you are and what where you think you're fastest at. Which is so great to have these seniors in the room at the same time because they can show you different techniques and styles for yeah, certain things. Yeah, a lot of my a lot of my technique is really based off of all the stuff that I learned from the seniors. It's really great. All right. Really helpful. Mm -hmm. And the coaches too. They also show you a bunch of different styles. Oh yeah, Especially it's real nice. They all, because everyone comes from different wrestling backgrounds, so they all have different different styles and different techniques. It's real great to learn all of them. Especially Coach Curtis. Oh yes, Curtis Curtis. I practice with him. He does not mess around. It's true. It's true. Is Coach Dylan going to be joining us tonight? I think so. It'd be great to see him here, along with his students and his uh, wrestlers. Doing a great job coaching. Always fun in the room, too. It looks like CJ's mom has made a sign for him with his face on it. Oh, that's, that's going to be great for his ego. That's <laughs> adorable. What a supportive mom. Look at that. <laughs> Josh is having fun. Also, American flag has just been dropped. Oh, yeah, the flag's dropped. That looks like we're getting started soon. Cameraman walking around. I feel like the best way to start the match is just to be aggressive and go out there fast, you know? They know the fastest wrestler is going to get the shot. Yeah. Especially if they go in with a plan. Yeah, you really have to have a plan of what you're going to do as soon as you go get off on the mat. Sometimes your plan's not going to work out, but really all that matters is you have an idea of what you could do. Definitely the scariest wrestler is the one that are aggressive with the plan, know exactly what's going on. True, true. And the one that you you really have to shoot first, but at the same time you have to be fast when you shoot. Because if you shoot first and you're slow, you're going to get sprawled on and you also uh, scored on. To, you also have to do a smart smart shoot. You can't just go at them. You have to plan it out. Plan it out, move them around, you know. Get get the legs facing towards you. Get the locks. Really pull their arms. Really anything to set it up. And then hopefully into that, you can just get a pin or just back points. It's true. It's true. And we might see some long matches today. Yeah, we might have some long matches. You know, some might go into overtime. Walden Grove looks pretty good. But Ooh. I'm sure that's going to go. Overtime's good. always the most entertaining, so. Yep. Oh, you see that? Coach Hickey putting down the green and red bands. Yeah, we got the bands out there on the mat now. Is the ref here? Yep. The ref yeah, is we here. The, we have the ref here. Ooh, the stands getting filled up even more. Yeah, a lot of people are filling up the stands now. It's going to be a real nice wrestling match today, especially for our seniors. And then this wouldn't be their last matches, but it's going to be the last... Last senior night here at Siena, and that's gonna be sad to say goodbye to them after the season ends. Oh, that's true. That's true. But hopefully, we can see him back at off season. Yeah, we can see him at off season. I'm sure some of them might come in and help coach. It's gonna be great to see him. Yeah, it'd be real good to see him. Oh. Quite a burst of people just walked in the room. It's true. It's true. You have to see all the eager faces in the crowd. Yeah.
So we are having Timothy Morris join us for commentating for the wrestling match tonight. Thank you for welcoming me. So uh, for the Cienega Wrestling, we have, again, Daniel Hernandez for 106. Against Jack Warren. And then we have Dakota Nettles at 113. Against Zachary Bates. And we have Jack Ferguson, 120. Uh, Jareen Martin. And we have Gunnar Robinson, Cienega, 126. Pedro Mendoza. We have David Chase for 132. Channing Porter. We have Thomas Jules, 144. Uh, against Isaiah Zaborban. We have Irving Rodriguez, 150. Against Jacek Lewis. We have Hunter Lashley, 157. Against Christian Go Gallardo. 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 And we have CJ Handgardner, 165. Against Esteban Carrillo. 175, we have Patrick Fleming. Against Jaden Byton. And... Rich McCormick, 190 with the forfeit, and Joshua Consavage, 215 with the forfeit. And for 285, we have Dominic Parks. Against Salvador Nieves. Oh. Yeah, I think we have some really great matchups tonight. Also, a large spread going to 106 to 285. Yeah, there's a lot of people wrestling tonight. Yes, and they just changed the weight classes this year. Last year, they were even lighter going to the same weight. Oh, yeah, the, I, I, the AIA did change it, didn't they? Man. So we're going to look at 12 matches tonight, right? I think so, yeah. I just counted that. I think they're getting ready for their first match right now, which would be... 11 matches, and we're Daniel, starting off. I think the first match we're going to be starting off with Daniel Hernandez and Jack Warren at 106. Or is coach giving a speech first? I think I think the coach either might give the speech before practice, I mean, before the match or at the end of the match. Yeah, I'll probably do both. Actually, he's going to say some things about the seniors. Some things about the journey throughout wrestling. They really support in their send off here. And they all look happy down there. Getting ready, celebrating. It's gonna be great. Looks like they're all huddled up. Again, we're facing off against Yen again, Walden Grove. Walden Grove. Walden Grove's colors are amazing, though. That nice maroon. Oh, yeah, that, that the nice red. garnet red. Honestly, great. And I believe their singlets are striped, which is unique. Mm -hmm. I think their mask off is like a wolf or something. An intimidating animal. I bet a cougar beats a wolf easily. True, it's true, but we are bobcats, not cougars. Ooh. I knew that. I knew that. Bobcats, yeah. Bobcats. <laughs> and this is really great. We have a nice show, a uh, nice um show up of uh, all these porters and parents out here. think is interesting for the match tonight is <coughs> when the old Walden Cienega coach is now a Walden Grove coach. Oh uh, yeah. I think one of the old one of the old coaches for Cienega, Coach Johnson, might be coming tonight. Yes, uh Coach Royce Johnson, he's a former Olympian and US Air Force wrestler. He is the Walden Grove coach now. Yeah he's he used to be a Cienega coach for Gabe and I. He's a great coach, yeah he used to coach me and Timmy. Great guy, real nice person. When I was trying to get back in shape for the season, I am unfortunately not able to compete in. I went to him, and he helped me get back in shape. Same, he, he helped me when I had my concussion. He's a real, real nice guy. It's going to be a real exciting match tonight. Can't wait to see Coach Johnson out there. All the smiles for the camera down there on our Cienga team. 
Looking great as always. Ready to take some yeah. games. You have a lineup right there. With our other JV wrestlers sitting in the stands here to support. Oh yeah, we have uh, the rest of the team that's not going to be wrestling. They're in the stands cheering on our seniors and uh, our varsity wrestlers out here. Also in the stands seems to be a defensive line coach, Coach uh, Valdez, and the offensive coordinator coach with head football coach. Our strength and conditioning coach seems to be talking to one of their coaches too. Oh, that's crazy. It's crazy. There's a lot of support out here for our senior boys, senior Bobcats out here. Um, yeah, it's a real special night with them again. Uh, it's out two of them at forfeits, but I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. And the speech begins. Lopez. She's one of our wrestlers for the girls team. She's also, I think, the girls team captain. Yes, Marissa, she's a great person. I've known her for a while. Um, her older brother wrestled when I was a freshman. He was an amazing wrestler. That's amazing. We have our family out there with them. It's real great. Definitely a big part of the team. Always helping. Thanks for having me in college. 
but uh, thank, thank you. you. I appreciate it. I want to do a great pleasure, so please do it. Please do it. Please do it. Friends, pastors, come down. I appreciate it. Brandon Escobedo. Team manager. Where do I begin? Uh, absolutely impossible for us coaches to do anything that we do without Brandon. But I will say this. The one thing I love about this community and working here is it's always a family. It's always a community. It's always together. It's family. I was sitting in the stands in 2017 at Red Mountain at, at, at the Nate Johnson Bulls, and I was sitting next to Raina's parents when she was a freshman, and we were talking and stuff. And I got to thinking to myself all those times that mom and dad were always there too with with Raina, and now Raina's sister, uh, mom and dog. <laughs> And I've always been there. This is what it's all about to me right here, is that it's, it's always about family. Managers don't always travel to Phoenix. You see other teams from Tucson, they don't bring managers to Phoenix. But Randy and her family have always been there. Always found their way there. Always found time for the team. Always support everything. And, and I think Randy is just awesome. You guys have done an incredible job. You should be very proud of yourself. Last year when we went to the Girls State Championship, they wouldn't allow managers to come because of COVID. And we had one girl get into a match where there was a lot of scoring going on really fast. And myself and the other coach were like, my head's spinning. But we knew the score was wrong. And I went up to the front table and I said, that score is not right. And they said, well, have you scored it? And I looked back to see where Randy was. And then I realized at that time, they wouldn't let her be there. And I knew if I had her there, I would have been able to know that score. But I thought she would have had it down. Boom. Yes, it's 8 to 7. It's 7 to 5. Um, but I was so bummed that she wasn't there. And I'm so excited to have you. She's so organized with whatever she does uh, in college and after this, she's going to be also successful at it. And she's pretty incredible. And uh, she's just a testament to the job that you guys have done. We really appreciate all of you, all of you, all of you, and all of you. We look forward to the rest of the season. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you.
He is willing to step in and play any part that he can play, no matter what it is. Uh, you know, he has stepped in every way we've asked him to step in at that moment's notice and stuff. He's always been willing to do that. Uh, he, you know, and he comes in my room every day and we talk a little bit about different stuff. Uh, he's just an incredible kid. Uh, he is a great competitor, and, and all of that is a four point oh student, correct? Five point oh student, five point oh student. <laughs>
That's, that's the biggest I've seen uh, every time I super step on the mat and wrestle or play on a football field like he did this, this last four days this year. And, and just to see him come from where he started wrestling at Ring Rock Vista to, to Siena and have the success he had in place in the state last year and being seen this year for one of time and being one of the top dogs of his weight uh, just speak volumes about the work ethic and how much you bring to the table and just, just his overall demeanor and personality. He's just an incredible young man. And he's done an incredible job. And, and he, you know, he's, he's, he's gone through some stuff recently that can be very difficult, but you never know it. You never know it. He just carries on and he's strong and he's a great teammate. And he's just a, the epitome of what I would want and, and, and a son of if he's like my son. I just love you guys, I'm proud of you. He just got back from, from Simpson College in Iowa on a football visit. He's not only on a to go wrestle in college, but he wants to play, play football still. So uh, I support him every year, and I know that way he's not going to be a great success for us. Richard McCormick is our 250, not 190, he's still at 215, maybe we're down 190. 
Uh, Richie, like CJ, uh, I think everyone needs to be a setup. You know, just that journey going through the Wildcats today, which was a youth football here in the city over by Swire High School, uh, when they were all over there together. And I didn't get a chance to coach Richie because he was on a different team, but just watching him and seeing his dad coach him and being every night in the football field um, was just incredible to watch. And, and they were always part of good team. You know, they were part of a good team because of Richie. Um, and and it's just a hard work and incredible young man. If he lost in the state finals last year, we would fully expect he's going to get back to the state finals this year. Um, he, uh, he, is, he would be probably over 100 wins if we didn't have a COVID year last year. Uh, unfortunately, COVID kind of shut our season down to the point where we didn't get it. We got something which was great, but we didn't get the full season. And I have no doubt he'd probably be over 100 wins if he had a full season in front of him. Uh, Richie is one of those kids that if uh, I can take 100 of them, I take 100 of them. He's there every day except that one day he was slept. Um, uh, and, and he just puts his head down to work and he's a leader. Uh, he puts kids in the right place and he helps, he helps his teammates become successful and stuff. And, you know, it, it's funny because um, Richie and my son used to wrestle each other when they were little. And for the most part, Cole, who graduated last year, he beat Richie when they were younger, like sixth and seventh grade. But when we went over to Ring Mount Vista one, for one duel, uh, Richie, Richie pinned Cole. And, and I know that was a big deal for him. You know, at the time, I wasn't celebrating. Um, but, you know, I was happy for him. And, and Richie's parents, even though we were always around each other, our relationship grew over time. You know, um, and we didn't really get to know each other because we were on different football teams. We were always at the same fields. And I think the best thing about this is that we have, we have an incredible relationship in the entire family now, my wife and Missy and myself. And we're all just, we're just friends. And, uh, it's, it's nice to grow that way and to be able to do that with people. And, um, you know, an incredible young man, and you guys have done a good job. And I, I have no doubt that we'll be back at the state championship this year, and I have no doubt that we'll be on top of the podium. And I have no doubt, unfortunately, we'll decide to play football next year. So I'm going to put you guys on the top, all the time we're off for football. Um, he comes here and he'll take a few visits, and he's going to be successful with whatever he does. Football will happen next night. So I appreciate him, an incredible young man, and I hate that he has to sit by at some point. I think that's one of the hardest things for some of these kids is that. They, they've started to learn that there's a finale to things. You know, we've had some conversations with some of them. There's been some tough days where they know it's coming to an end. And I try to tell them that the important thing is to understand is that the lessons that you learned in that restroom are not going to play a role in your life outside of wrestling, whether it be your education, your family, uh, and you're making decisions and just working around and stuff. So uh, enjoy the ride. Uh, and you know, when they lose, do it correctly and be proud of your effort. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good job. <laughs> All right, and we will, we will have just a few guys that just didn't come in time, but we'll be fine. Uh, we're going to get started. We'll park the National Anthem. Okay, we're back again. It was a nice speech from Coach for all the seniors. But we're here at Santa Cruz High School, watching the wrestling mat. Um, we out. We're going against Walden Grove. It's uh currently 4:24, and we are live. Now I'm Caden Bell. Just can't wait to see these matches tonight. It's gonna be real entertaining. And I am Timmy Morris. I'm a former wrestler, and I'm excited to see the matches tonight. And again, I'm Gabe Lopez, and we can't wait to see this match get started. If they are preparing one last time, just quickly before these matches begin. Yeah, just warming up again. You know, you really got to stay warm for all your matches. It's going to be interesting matches tonight because 
a lot of the older senior wrestlers have an old coach in the opposite corner. Coach Royce Johnson on the Waldrow side of the mat. He's an old mentor and coach to many of the seniors and juniors. And yeah, he's a real great coach. Um, yeah, it's real nice to see him again out there coaching again. Bobcats disbanding, getting our little chair on after a great little talk, I assume. Just putting out some plans, talking about the night, how it's going to go. Hoping for a lot of wins tonight. I believe in our Bobcats. Yep. Walden Grove just doing some two mans on the mat. Yeah, it looks like they're warming up, uh, doing some technique moves. Definitely fast these shots, too. Would have been intimidating, seeing a lot of ankle picks, single legs. That is that is true, that is true. Um, looks like they're really efficient on their single legs and um, really sharp and fast. We unfortunately can't see any numbers yet, but it's going to be a great match to watch and talk about. Can't wait for this. Again, also, the majority of the thing is just you have to be fast and... Um, Really, you have to think about what you're going to do before the match and really just kind of keep it going and you have to flow with uh, whatever happens out there. Yeah, definitely a plan is needed and a fast reaction speed really goes a long way here too. That is true, that is true. It's nice to be good on offense and defense both, but it's also really good to be out there and be really aggressive and really be the first one to take a shot or to get a takedown. Because the sport isn't just about physical activity, it's also very mental. You have to have a lot of technique and technical alities to just really get your opponent down on the mat. Yeah, wrestling is about 90% mental. Some people say, you know, you really just got to, if you're tired, you have to tell yourself if you're not tired, you're good, you're good. You also have to be in the peak condition too. Yeah, it's a very tiring sport. You can't give in to that. I always just got to keep fighting all three rounds and sometimes even over time. That's true, that's true. Changing up their practice, moving up and down. See the type of things they're doing. I already see people trying to hit some rolls and cradles. Yeah, they look like a pretty decent team. They do, they do. But uh, I really think that. It, I really think it's going to be a great matchup between our team. Yes, I agree. I am watching these athletes wrestle, and I'm seeing a couple of mistakes here and there from quite a few of the athletes, so I think our wrestlers can take them. Yeah, one error in a wrestling match can change the entire thing. Yes, one error can send you to a scramble, and next thing you know, you're on your back and pinned. You also just need to perfect that technique because... A lot of times you can just be fighting yourself on the mat, just overexerting and just doing stuff against yourself and just not making it work out. So hopefully none of us will end up doing that. Been really smart. Uh, looks like we've got a couple San Diego wrestlers on the mat warming up too. <laughs> just having a great time with each other. Looks like they're switching up what uh, they're working on once more. Yeah, I can't wait till we get started on the actual matches. Uh, yeah. Just really preparing for these matches, too. Yeah, they're really preparing, really working hard out here. They're definitely trying to win these. Yeah. They all look athletically fit, so it's not going to be it's not going to be anyone overpowering. Right, right. Looks like the stands are getting more packed, so amazing turnout. On the opposite side, we have all of our 
wrestlers that will unfortunately not be wrestling tonight just here to support. And I think that support really goes a long way. Yeah, I really do think so too. We have our um, JV wrestlers out here helping our varsity wrestlers get wrestlers get better. And uh, at the same time, our varsity help our J helps our JV get better. And just on the mental alone, knowing you have teammates there supporting you is just really, it's really motivational. Also supporting our wrestlers tonight, <clears throat> since a lot of them are football players, are quite a few football coaches and um, our strength and conditioning coach. Looks like our Sienga Bobcats are now on the mat, ready to practice a bit. Yeah, Sienga's out warming up now. Probably so going to do some takedowns and top-bottom work. He's really preparing for these matches. You can see the two Chase brothers having a good time practicing with each other. Well, that's similar weights, I believe. Doing some good stretches, takedowns. Also really preparing for this night. Gonna make some great matches. And then Coach Hickey will be coaching, I believe. Mid-match? Yeah, Coach Hickey will be coaching the matches tonight. Uh, I think we might have some help from Coach Chase, too. Well, hopefully they'll keep their voice by the end of tonight. Hopefully. <laughs> but yeah, it could be sometimes pretty difficult to hear with the headgear on to try to hear and listen to what your coaches are saying. It could be a challenge. Also with the crowd being so loud. Oh yeah, it's with parents screaming, <laughs> trying to coach too. Yeah, that's great. Great mental motivation and support. Yeah. Remember our first open tournament, how it was just so hard to hear like our coach over everybody. And then by the end, their voices were just gone. Yeah. And it was a good time for everybody. like one more minute on takedowns and then we're gonna switch up the practices a bit. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really great. It's really important that, again, you stay warm and ready to go. And just recently during our practices, uh, these athletes have been really working hard yeah. preparing for tonight and other tournaments too. So really trying to get that win, preparing for state champ too. That's gonna be a big time. Yeah, that's gonna be real big. And we hope to see most, if not all, of our seniors there. But uh, I really feel like uh, I really feel like Sienega could win this match. Looks like we have a lot of friends and families out here tonight. Oh yeah, the stands has got quite a bit of people joining us. Some people I recognize and it looks like a lot of people that don't come here like parents and other friends. Yeah, we have parents, friends, even some teachers are coming out to watch their students. And that support is just really nice as we talked about before. And it's great to see so many faces out here supporting our wrestling and our athletes. That's true, it's true. It's really important that these athletes feel supported throughout their wrestling journey. And both teams as well. I'm sure not all the parents here are just for us. That's true. You can see our girls team down here talking to some parents as well. Yeah, we're really working, drilling out here hard to get ready for the match tonight. I wonder who will be wrestling, because I'm not too familiar with all of the opponents' names, and I just, I'm really curious on to see who is. Especially for Jack Ferguson out there, really Looks going for him, being his first year here. <laughs> Looks like we're going to be starting up again with our first match being Daniel Hernandez at 106 versus Jack Warren.
Looks like we're going to be starting our national anthem right now. How's our national anthem preparing for these games? Just showing support. <coughs> and the concession stands are open now for parents and friends. I think here comes the beginning of the matches. Oh yeah, it looks like we have um, the wrestlers checking into the scoreboard. We have Daniel Hernandez and Jack Warren. Jack Warren, okay. At 106. And our refs coming in to explain, I assume. Now come the our captains are Cap coming out on the mat now to talk to the ref. We have all the seniors out on the mat. Just showing kindness and love for the other team, making sure there's no hard feelings. And I believe after this, our matches will be starting. That's how nervous he's at. Hmm? That's how nervous they are to step on the mat right now. Oh yeah, it's always really nerve wracking to get on out on the mat because you never know how the outcome is going to be. And then I'm sure all the eyes looking at you just can't be helping, <laughs> especially for such a big night like this. Senior oh yeah. Night. You really don't want to disappoint anyone or disappoint coaches or anything. You really just want to give it your best out there, and I feel like that's all that really matters as long as you work your work hard and give it your best. You can't feel bad. You always want to be the winner in this. Just like Rich McCormick always says, just make sure you're always the hardest working on the mat. Oh. Looks like we have Daniel Hernandez, standing good, Jack Warren. Rest at 106. Rose. Really really Daniel slides out. And they tie up once again. Looks yeah. like they're hand fighting right now to try to set up for a shot or something. Daniel moving a little bit slower, trying to assess. Oh, oh and he's no. it's hit by one. Daniel's trying to fight the shot taken by Jack Warren. Oh, looks like he, Jack Warren got the takedown. Two points to him. Daniel seems to work out to get out of this. There's one point for recovery. Looks like his leg is locked right now, so it's a little hard for him to move. Actually, looks like he tried to roll out of it, but it didn't work. Yes, and Daniel seems to be struggling very hard with that hand control. Hand control is one of the most important things when you're out on the mat. I agree. Um, I feel like it's really important to gain control of the hand and try to do a stand-up. Just the way Jack Warren has control. Oh, he was losing it for a bit, but... He just overpowered Daniel on that, forcing him down again. 
right there. Daniel should be pushing back right now. Oh, he has the leg locked right there. <coughs> and he's slowly pulling into his back. And and they're really fighting for that neck, trying to keep it. And Daniel tried to go for the reversal there, using <coughs> that necktie to flip him onto his back and gain control. That's true. I feel like the worst thing you could do when you're on bottom is reach back, because then they could really work um, work something in or try to f roll you and flip you over. Well, looks like first first period's over. The Jack Warren in the lead. Yeah, it looks like Walden Grove has five points and Sienga zero. And they are starting off at neutral. Not the great start for us, but I'm sure Daniel will take it back. Oh, Jack looks Warren. Like, looks like we have another takedown for Walden Grove. Oh, Daniel's trying to fight it up. And both are at a loss right now as to how to keep going. And all Daniel needs to, oh, there we go. Daniel needs to turn that into an Iranian, and he attempts that. He unfortunately didn't sink quite enough into it to finish it. Oh, looks like he almost got an escape there, but not quite. And Jack Warren's just really keeping control of this match so far. Now, it's really important for when you get put on your back that you really try your hardest to roll over, get off your back. Especially don't want to get pinned. Yes, you just keep going until you hear that whistle. And Daniel Hernandez has an amazing bridge. That's true. Never felt it. Very flexible and strong with his neck. It's always hard to keep him down, but... Looks yes, like he was able to get off his back, and now he's trying to build his base. Yeah, it's been hard for him to take control back. And that's a dangerous thing for Daniel to grab onto, is reaching back and grabbing that arm. Yeah, Especially like with his leg turked like that. Like I said earlier, it's always not the best idea to really reach back. And uh, yeah, on bottom you always want to be moving, not reaching back, trying to build back up. And second period has ended. And neutral again. One. The score being zero on Cienega and nine to Walden Grove. And they're trying to get a correction on the scoreboard. Oh, Walden Grove with ten now. That yeah, looks like Walden Grove does have 10, and we still are at zero. In third period, I believe Daniel's going to really need a pin if he wants to come back from this. Oh, and it looks like Daniel has a reversal. Two to Daniel. There's that reversal from Daniel. Like he needs to keep charging hard. Uh, pin is his best bet right now. It is quite hard to get eight points in a quarter in the period. Jack Warren really trying to take control back here. Daniel's not letting it happen now. Yes. Reaching back is quite bad there on the wall and grove. But it's, it's like, it seems to have worked. It's a very risky thing. Reaching back and turn good as you can see. Or very bad. There's, here comes that really good bridge from Daniel. Yeah, I feel like towards the second, third, third period you really have to find the extra energy to go and, through. And now we're going into blood time. They have uh, five to minutes to stop the bleeding or it's a forfeit. Yeah, I think I heard blood. Jack Warren. And right now it is 15 to two. Walden Grove's wrestler is up and they're in a 
very good position to tag Daniel, the San Diego wrestler. Yeah. A tag is when you have too many points to continue the match. At this level, that is 15 points. So <clears throat> the Long Grove wrestler needs two points and match is over. Oh, yeah, it's always the worst thing to get teched. Really not a great feeling. Yes, I was taken out of the state championships with a tech. It ruined me. Yeah, definitely not a way to go out. I believe Danny wants to come back from this. He just really has to come up with a plan walking out with Sienega. Score is not looking too good for Sienega Bobcats here. Walnut Grove may be taking his first win, but let's just hope that Sienega can take it back with Daniel Hernandez wrestling for them. Hoping for a pin. I assume he has a plan for this. Looks like they're up back on the mat. Looks like they're able to stop the bleeding. Daniel is on bottom, and Walden Grove will be on top. And we are back from blood time. And if you saw Jack Warren on Walden Grove, he starts on the right side, which is not very common. And Most people do start on the left side when they're top. Yes, that means he's a left-handed person. Daniel That's how I wrestled. Yeah, so for some people, it's just a preference, too. For me, I know... I always really just change up on whichever side I go on. And Daniel got out of that. This is a very bad position for Daniel. And there we go. That is a tech. That was two points from a near fall. And Daniel has been tech. Looks like Walden Grove takes a win for this match. For one of six wrestlers, Jack Warren and Dana Hernandez. Jack Warren's taking the win for Walden Grove. Looks like our next match will be uh, Zachary Bates on Walden Grove versus Zachary Bates will be going against Dakota Nettles at 113. Yes, and Dakota has been wrestling a long time. He's a very good wrestler. Yes, very experienced. Definitely a threat on the mat. He really makes a, his makes his own style and makes it his own. I think he's going to dress right off the bat. Walden Grove getting a shot in. Dakota not letting him get the points right now, though. Really? Yes, and Dakota is not letting him take that. I believe he's trying to hold that until the, the referee puts him back to neutral. It sure looks like they're both in very uncomfortable positions. I think he's trying to lock legs. Dakota is not in a good position at all right now. Like, he makes the best of it. Looks like and there was no position taken. Dakota's just really not letting them get anything right now. Yeah, it looks like they're both really talented wrestlers. Really good match for each other. Yes, they're both very talented, so this is a long scramble right here. Yeah, and Zach just, Zachary on Walden Grove just has a really good lock onto Dakota's leg. It's hard for him to get out here. Yes, yeah. and it's a good cradle technique. Yeah, they both seem like really strong wrestlers. Um, Looks like uh, they're both fighting really hard to um, score. Looks like right now Walden Grove has two points and San Diego zero. Uh, Dakota getting rematted and cross faced. Yes, Walden Grove has the Walden Grove wrestler has a very aggressive cross face. Yeah, he might come out with the bloody nose from that one. True. I feel like it's really important though if you're gonna cross face. You really got to make it aggressive and really um, make an impact with the crossface. Definitely. A light crossface will not do much. Although the risk with a crossface is <clears throat> if you reach back, the ref can think it's too much and give you a tech for it. That is true. With the crossface, you could only crossface from when your hand is previously at or it would be considered punching. That's just... Walden Grove, Zachary Bates just was really taking control of that match. In two points. And he's yep. starting bottom for period two. We're going into the second quarter. 
Dakota Nettles on top. Yeah, Dakota Nettles is not letting him get up so far. Oh, looks like he got her. Walden Grove down. One more point for that recovery. And now they're just hand fighting a bit. And that was a good sprawl from Dakota. Like he was distracted with a hand to the face. It's like two more points for Walden Grove for another takedown. Yeah, Dakota really has to get up from here to get an escape point. Yeah, there needs an escape or reverse right here. Does look like it's hard for him to move right here, though. I guess what Dakota needs to do is find a way to base up as he had started there. But the problem with basing up when you have an opponent on you is he gives up a lot of opportunities. Right there, it seems like he's trying to get a chicken wing, but fails. And he just got a chicken wing, so now he's going to go tilt, and hopefully Dakota can get out of that. Yeah, it really looks like he's struggling out here to try to base up or really do anything. Zachary Warren's really taking control of this match. Dakota did punch out of that chicken wing. And it kind of looks like he's struggling to do really anything right here. Just avoiding to get pinned in that second period. And the Crota is fighting for a neutral. Yeah, it looks like third period started on neutral. Still 0-5 on the Sienna to Warden Grove. Oh, Dakota, Dakota going for a big shot. But Zachary had a great sprawl as a counter. And he goes for that cradle right there. And yeah. he does not get it. Looks like uh, right now they're scrambling. Yeah, Dakota just avoiding to get pinned here. Yeah, it's real important that you try your hardest not to get rolled to your back. It's always the worst when you get pinned. Yes, and Dakota did a great job of getting out of that cross-face cradle. Except now he is put back in a double chicken wing and put on his shoulders. Oh, that's true. Chicken wings are really painful, especially when you try fighting them. Yeah, and now he's wiggling right now. His arm must be in some pain. Yeah, Completely. I don't know how he's going to get out of this one. He's trying to roll over the guy, it looks like. Oh. And there we go. Dakota was pinned in... 5-10. Yeah, what an amazing match. Yeah, Zachary Bates really coming out with that. Dakota, Dakota's a very skilled wrestler, so the fact that he's able to pin him. Looks like we have Jack out on the mat right now. Jack Ferguson, our... Uh, Jack Ferguson is wrestling um, Jaron Martin, it looks like, for 120. Yes, this Walgo wrestler is very aggressive. Yeah. Two very aggressive wrestlers on 120 right here. Yeah, like I said, it's always best to get the first take down, like Walden Grove did right now. This again being Jack's very first year wrestling, he's probably a little unexperienced compared to some of these other guys. It's always great to see such a new wrestler out here on varsity. Yeah, it's amazing. He's a new wrestler, but at the same time, he's still really talented and really kind of just does what he feels like would be best for the match. He's a very intimidating wrestler, too. 
if you've ever wrestled him, you see just the look in his eyes. It's really intimidating. Looks like he's really trying to fight the pin right here. Mm. Really not letting him ro roll over to his back. He's trying to bridge up here, just roll out. And right now, <clears throat> they're stuck at three near fall points. Only way to get out of this without getting those points is the cradle. He's holding that bridge. Yeah, he's really bridging out this majority of this period. Yes, and he is cranking that arm to put the senior wrestler on their back. He's really trying to get out of this. Yeah, it's amazing how long he's be been able to fight the oh. the um, wing. He was fighting that position for a while. Great bridge, true, but you just can't hold the bridges forever, man. Looks like Waldengrove got the pin, though, and they've yet won another match. Yeah. Jaron, another very talented wrestler, looks like. Getting looks a pin like, in the first period. Looks like uh, Gunner is going to be wrestling right now. Gunner for Sienega, 126, I believe. <laughs> Against Channing Porter, it looks like. Gunner hasn't been on the mat in quite a while, I don't think. Yeah, due to COVID, he has been um, having to miss practices and some of the matches. So he might be a little bit rusty, but I'm sure he'll do great. Yes, and that was a good side by by the Long Grove wrestler. And taking into a cradle there. Yeah, he looks like fighting to get that knee in the side, but failed. Uh, it would have been great if we would have done a knee slide there to try to get out of that, but um, looks like the other guy was just too heavy on top. Yes, and Gunner missed his chance there. He had the wall and go wrestler right underneath him. That could have been an easy pick. pin. Yeah, Gunner trying to fight the cradle, it looks like. Yes, and this wall and go wrestler seems to really like this cradle. I mean, you see him practicing him at the start? He's definitely not singing enough to get, accomplish that cradle, though. Yeah, going for the cradle once more. Oh. Gonna try and get out of it. He gave him that cradle right there. His arm was way too close to his leg. Again, it could have been avoided if he would have done a knee slide, but he wasn't right. able to. Yes, right there, Gunner needs to uh, hook his legs together and kick with both of them at once. They'll break that grip. Instead, he rolled over and the Wongo wrestler released it. And he's going for that chicken wing. Yeah, Gunner trying to trying his best to stay up. Really, he should really bridge right there. Just keeping his shoulders off the ground. Oh, uh, looks like a pin for Walden Grove again. Once more, score being zero to seven, and getting the pin. Yes, that is a fall in a minute, 47. Right now we have David Chase, and it looks like that the seniors are going to be wearing the classic copper singlets tonight. Yes, these singlets were the original Sienna singlets. I wore them. They're very uncomfortable, but they are good singlets yeah they look really classic really nice I think it's really sentimental that they wear their original singlets on the senior night yeah. uh, it looks like David Chase versus Isaiah's bourbon bourbon or, I don't know I'm not sure how to pronounce that but Isaiah's probably another very talented wrestler Yeah, but I'm sure David Chase could pull the win on this one. David Chase is an amazing wrestler, really talented. There's a hand fight in a while. David goes in for a shot. Yes, 
nice, and they're tied up right now. Smartest idea would be to get out of the tie. It limits what you can do. Yes, I hate getting tied up. It's um, it's really frustrating, but at the same time, it could be used to get um, get the other wrestler into a position where he could take a good shot. And it's like David took that to his advantage. Yeah, it looks like it's two points for Sienega. Yes, and they are once again tied up. David tries to do a sweep single there and fails. I think he goes for single again. Very fast sprawl coming from Isaiah's. Looks like the score currently is two Sienega, one Walden Grove. David keeps going for that ankle. There's a little bit left in the first period. Looks like they're just gonna keep hand fighting for the rest of this. And that's the end of the first period, now going into the second period. And David seems to be holding his head at the end. Yeah, this looks like it's going to be a pretty intense match between these two. I agree. They both look really strong wrestlers. And yeah. David is on bottom right now. Coming in for period two. And David stands up very quick. Yes, yeah, so that was a very quick stand up by David Chase. Hopefully he's, gets the escape. He's not able to break that grip though and gets taken back down. Uh, it's a, uh, oh, he got the escape. That's and amazing, that, David Chase. There's the one point for the escape right there. So now the score is three to one, David Chase is up. Yeah, looks like we're just back to hand fighting. Attempting to get more singles from David, but Warner Grove's not letting it happen. And, and David has a good sprawl there. And it makes them go right back to neutral. They're tied up a lot in this. Oh, David finally getting a lock on the leg. Hopefully he can do something with it. As he finally gets that single leg, and is very close to getting control. Control is when you have control of the hips. And there's that takedown. Two points for David because he controlled the hips. Yeah. However, they went off the mat, so now they're going right back in the middle. David Chase is on top. Yeah. Looks like David's bandages are going into his eye. Yeah, it must be hard for to see, especially after that injury he had last night. Agree. Um... Those bandages, it looks like they really are covering his eyes, and it could really make the match really difficult. Kind of looks like he just let Isaiah's escape out of that so he can go back to neutral. Seems like he's very comfortable here. Yeah, he uh, he's really great in neutral position. Bullets are trying to figure out what to do here. He goes for another shot. Oh, oh and that's oh. off the mat. Looks like a toss by David, though. It was a really nice toss. Went out of bounds, though. And David was very close to getting that point, but he got him off the mat. And that is blood time right there. Or one, Actually, I'm not sure if David can see a, or not. One Grove got, got a blood time oh. there. And it gives David Chase time to readjust his bandages to put them over his eye, not on his eye. Yeah, I'm sure not being able to see isn't too great for a wrestling match. Yeah, I feel like the bandages are being really distracting right now for him having to constantly be readjusting them while he's out there on the mat. Oh, she's just going to keep going hard, trying to get this win 5-2 on Sienna's side at this moment. Yes, and you can see there the coach with the black pants on and the collared shirt. He is actually a former U.S. Army wrestler. Uh, he wrestled for the United States Army for many years and competed with the U.S. wrestling team. That's amazing. Um, it's really nice that we have such amazing coaches.
Looks like David Chase is ready to go back out on the mat. Now we're just waiting for Walden Grove to get the blood fixed. Yes, and Miss Joe, the trainer here, she is a very talented trainer. Very good at her job. And it looks like we're coming back for period three. As it's still period two. And we have 10 seconds left in this period. Yeah. And David's trying David to get use in. all of that to his advantage. And there's the end of the match. Or, so I'm sorry, end of the period. Yeah, it looks like they're going to the third period now. With David Chase on top and Isaiah's on bottom. I feel like David feels really confident on top here. And Key stops that stand up right there. A quick breakdown. I don't know, it looks like he let him escape one more time. Although that's neutral right there, one point for Walton Grove. Seems like David Chase is most comfortable in the neutral position. Because uh, it seems like both times he's let the Walden Grove wrestler up. He also just has that really aggressive single leg. And his favorite move is a cradle, and it just hasn't seemed like he's gotten the option to use one yet. Yes, and David needs to use that arm he has there. Oh, and there he goes. the takedown. He, and he has that two points for the takedown. And now the Long Grove had, wrestler has that arm stuck in there. Now David's going to try and run that cradle. And he's getting very close to that. Yes, he needs to crank that arm to the knee. Yeah, his nickname being the Cradle King, it would be amazing to see him hit one. Looks like they went out of bounds. They're going to recenter and go at it again. The score being 7-3 on Sianiga's side with 34 seconds left in the third period. Yes, and they did go back to neutral. So that was a three-point match. Sprawling. Maybe just trying to stall time here. Ooh. He tries a throw pass, and David has won his senior night match. It's an amazing win by David Chase right here. Uh, Walden Grove tried its best, though. And no, Isaiah's definitely put up a great fight for Walden Grove there. And David has put the first points on the board for Sandiga. The team score is currently 23-3. to Walden Grove is winning. No, Isaiah is also just being very comfortable on a neutral. Definitely kind of a mirror match there. Looks like yeah. now we have Curtis Chase. This is David's to... younger brother who's also been wrestling for a very long time and is also a skilled wrestler. Looks like uh, Curtis Chase is wrestling Jassic Lewis at 138. And there you go. Curtis gets the two points for a takedown. Unfortunately, he couldn't hold him on his back. Yeah, just like his brother, Curtis is an amazing wrestler. So that's going to be another great match to watch. And it seems like Curtis has control of that arm behind his back. Although he still stands up and Curtis brings him right back down. Yeah, that was a brutal mat return. Looks like he's really taking control of the match. There you go, Curtis sank in and 
brought him around, and he seems to have lost control of the hand, which and he gets the two points for a near fall. Yeah, he really seems to be riding this kid, but um, staying on top, which is good, really not letting him get up. Yeah, just really yeah, like maintaining control here. Curtis is showing his athleticism with jumping over his opponent. Looks like he, uh, Walden Grove broke the grip by Curtis Chase, but um, I feel like he could do just as well as neutral as he did on top. Curtis wants to go once again seems to have control of this even though they are side by side. Yeah, right now it looks kinda looks like a scramble going on between Curtis Chase and Jurassic Lewis. Now looks like they're just trying to fight for control here. Dang uh the one go wrestler does get the takedown. Although it did not put Curtis on his back. And there's the end of the first period. First period ending with 4-3 on Cienga's side. Kurtz is in the lead. Looks like Walden Grove will be on bottom. Oh, Kurtz keeping him down. Exactly what we want to see here. This looks like Curtis Chase likes to be doing a lot of tilts in this match. They're really fighting for control right now. It's really important to gain control on bottom and maintain control on top. Yeah, it's such just really fighting Curtis's foot here. Yes, that foot is, or was, limiting Curtis. Curtis is way too high on that, and that is why he banned it and went back to neutral. And we'll that was a good attack. attempt for a single for Jassic Lewis. Looks like Curtis sprawled on him, though, and is trying to go around for his two points. Yes, and Curtis should cross-face that, and it might open up a chance for Curator. However, looks like it seems like Curtis has it anyways. It looks like Curtis is just having trouble placing his weight. He seems to be either be going too high or too low. But oh, he got his Walden Grove on his back. There we go. It was pinned by Curtis Chase. That was amazing. Yes, Curtis taking after his older brother David with that cradle. Curtis getting a pin in the second period, now making the score 9 to 23 on Cienega's side. Now we have a forfeit. Yeah, it was a forfeit for Rich for um Tom. Oh, never mind. Yeah, actually forfeit for Thomas Stolzrud and looks like coming out right now would is going to be Oh, it looks like Walden Grove actually has a forfeit for 150 also. Looks like the next match is actually Hunter Lashley going against Esteban Carrillo. I'm not sure how much bad time Hunter has actually got this season. He's gotten quite a lot. He went to a uh, couple tournaments out of town, but uh, oh. uh, I heard today he's actually been struggling from a migraine. So I don't know if that might um, have to f conflict about how he's doing in the match. And oh, it looks like one of somebody's headgear yeah. got knocked off. Yeah, Walden Grove losing their uh, headgear. I think that migraine is affecting his wrestling today as he is not doing well. Yeah, he's moving quite slow. Looks like he's really struggling to get out of that. Yeah. Also, Esteban looking like he's quite an aggressive wrestler here. Yeah, 
Yeah, Hunter just trying not to get pinned. Bridged out. Oh, looks like he's trying to get an escape now. Got off his back. Oh, and there we go. He got that escape. It was a nice escape by Hunter Lashley. Although he went out of bounds. Oh, that is true. That's true. Score now being 1-5 on Sienega. Hunter hoping to make a point comeback. A little break for uh, Esteban to get his headgear back on. Yes, and Hunter Lashley's record for the season seems to be not too good at 2-13. and 13. Yeah, but um, there seems to be a lot of really talented wrestlers this year. You know, sometimes it's, a, it's actually his first year on varsity this year. Sometimes it can be really difficult to get started off, you know? I know my first year as varsity, I was not doing good at all that season. Yeah, especially if he's been going against wrestlers like we see here from Walden Grove, it must have been a pretty hard season for his first year on varsity. I agree. Esteban Carrillo seems like a pretty strong, amazing wrestler. But um, I really think Hunter Lashley could really um, pull through and maybe even win this match. It is unfortunate that he is suffering from a migraine right now. I know how much of an effect that can have mid-match. I agree. It really... Um, makes it hard to think and focus, especially with the pain that it, like, that comes with the migraine. Yeah, if he gets like rematted, his head knocks the ground a little. It's gonna, it's not gonna feel too great for him. Yeah. Looks like they are having some issue with Esteban's headgear, though. It looks like it. Um, they have been taking a while trying to get it fixed. It may just be tightened it to uh, make sure it doesn't fall off once more, but Esteban is a very aggressive wrestler, so. Hunter Lashley is trying to stay warm walking around the mat. Yeah, he's just. All right. Esteban coming back onto the mat for uh, period one with a minute left. Looks like Hunter Lashley had a opportunity to do a duck under there. And they're tied up right there, which is never a good situation. Oh, uh, failed sprawl. Hunter being sweeped to the ground. Looks like Esteban Carrillo is trying to get it in a cradle right now, but Hunter at Lashley is not making it easy for him. He's really trying to fight off the cradle right now. Yeah, that spawn's just not letting go. He's really, really trying for this. Yeah, at this point, you know, you really just got to find, like, an inner strength and, like, just really try to fight off the pin. Now the question is... Looks like he was able to last out the period and not get pinned. Right now, Walden Grove has 12, and um, Sienega has one. Definitely not a great start to the match. What's the last thing? Looks like a smooth reversal by Esteban Carrillo. Esteban just sitting on top of Hunter right now. And just Hunter doesn't have much to do here. Oh, he's going rolled over onto his back. He's trying to bridge. And does seem like Esteban prefers to go by Stevie. And his record is 29 and 10. 
which is a pretty great record. That's pretty amazing. 29 wins. That's uh, that's a lot. But it also seems like he also has a lot of matches in two, though. Yeah, it seems like he has a lot more experience than Hunter as well. Yes, he has quite the experience. And if you want to see the same stats we are, go to trackwrestling.com. And it seems like the referee is waiting to see both shoulders on the ground and control. Hunter most likely has a shoulder off the ground, and therefore the ref will not call the pin. Yeah, it looks like there's only about 30 seconds left in the period. Hopefully he could last it out. And Hunter is very close to getting out of that. He really just has to bridge and um, get get both shoulders off the mat. Oh, it looks like uh, Walden Grove took the pin in the second period. Yeah, the score of 1-14 to 14 on Sienga's side. Not an amazing match for Hunter Lashley, but he's still just getting experience. And that migraine probably isn't helping him in any way. And next up is CJ Handgardner. Here we have CJ Handgardner against... Actually, I think CJ Handgardner has a forfeit right now. Oh, never mind. CJ Handgardner seems to be going against Josh Savage. And the ref seems to be in on this. <laughs> Looks like they're playing rock, paper, scissors to see who's going to get the win. A little choreography here. <laughs> and they are just having fun. Yeah, Josh and CJ having fun like always. And CJ has pinned Josh. Looks like CJ got the pin. Really showing a skill against Josh. Both describe themselves as lions here. <laughs> and uh, they both had forfeits, so I assume they're just having a good time at this point. Yep, quite the interesting win by CJ Handgardner. <laughs> Definitely felt a little cinematic there. <laughs> Live a shootout. And next up, we have an actual match with Patrick Fleming. <laughs> Looks like Patrick Fleming is going to be going against Jaden Bidden. Yeah, our 175 wrestlers going at it now. Intense hand fight. Patrick really trying to find a way in. Oh, well that was a quick sprawl by Patrick Fleming going in for a reshot. And. Looks like now all he has to do is get his legs around and oh, oh there you go. And Patrick just needs Looks to like control he has a, and pull him inside the mat. Looks like Patrick Fleming took And the there you go, Patrick has the pin. In 23 seconds, Patrick has pinned his opponent on his senior night. Always a great feeling to pin somebody on his senior night. As you can see, he's very happy there. That's quite impressive. Also making a crowd uproar with that. 23 next, seconds. Next up, I think we have Richie McCormick with the forfeit. A little bit of team support there for uh, good Patrick. Here we go. Richie with the senior night forfeit. Unfortunate to have a forfeit on senior night, but it's better than losing. I think next up we're going to have Joshua Savage with the forfeit also. Three forfeits of one night, especially on senior night. Must be kind of kind of boring for the night, huh? Yeah, it must be, especially with all the other teammates getting to wrestle. <laughs> Looks like right now we have Dominic Parks going out there to wrestle at 285 yes. against Salvador Nieves. Too heavy hit. Two heavyweights here. Hoping for another great match. And it seems as if Dom or Dominic does not have his track wrestling up to date right now. Dom actually looks a lot smaller than his opponent out here. So it looks like um, Walden Grove has wait for an advantage. Yeah, looks like Salvador's is trying to push it out here.
Coach makes sure Dominic just slows it down, keeps calm. Yes, and Dominic's trying to take control of this match. A lot of hand fighting. It's really important to not get sprawled on, especially when you're wrestling heavyweights, because um, it could be really hard to get them off of you. Yeah, it's pretty intense and sprawled on by a heavyweight. Just once that weight is on top of you, it's just hard to get out. And a, just a lot of hand fighting here. Dom is trying to get that trip, and Dom gets that trip right onto his back. It looks like he's been able to hold him on his yeah. back, and now we just put his shoulders on the ground. It is very hard for those big boys to get up off their back. Dominic really trying to hold the back. And Dominic gets that pin in 19 seconds on his senior night. I think that was the last match for tonight, actually. Yeah. Oh, 79 seconds. That's a great time to get a pin, especially for his last match. Yes, that was an epic event tonight. Um, looks like Sienega took the win with 45 against 35. Waldengrove 35, Sienega 45. Right, sure. Especially with Waldengrove getting that immense lead at the start. Really yeah, got it back here. We really had a great comeback. I want to call it comeback because we were always here, right? Always winning. Right. That's what it comes with these state seniors here. We we do all of our seniors to, have been in state. We do hope to see all of our seniors at the state tournament this year. Uh, next week, they will be going against Empire. It's going to be another home meet. Yeah, it was a great turnout for senior night tonight. Um, a lot of people here. And we have CJ and Josh playing on the mat again. <laughs> CJ thinks he can fly, apparently. A little bit of a celebration for these two. And we have Curtis doing a backflip off of a chair. And now Josh doing the backflip in the middle of the mat. CJ seems to be attempting one. And he does one with a little assistance. Oh, and P Flum seems to be trying to do one. Can't keep Oh, and he pulls it off. Alright, well that's uh, it for tonight. Thank you for watching. Um uh, next week we're gonna be having a um, match here against Empire. Um Uh, it's going to be live on Bobcat TV at Cienega. Um, thank you for watching again. Um, I'm Gabe Lopez. I'm with Caden Bell. It's been and a great Tim evening. Timothy Morris. And have a good night. Thank you.